In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your 1099s. Of course, in a previous video, I showed you how to clean up your vendors pretty easily, pretty quickly. Um, but in this one, I'll show you how to set up the different thresholds in which accounts uh, are used to pull the data from on, on the 1099. So first things first, the process, right? It's January. Um, and you're looking back at your prior year. Now, hopefully along the way, you're supposed to, as you pay or before you pay your vendors, you're supposed to get a W-9 and keep it on file for them before you pay them your, their first payment. Okay, so maybe while they get set up as a vendor, partner of yours, um, then you want to have them fill a W-9 at that point. Okay, then uh, come year end, on a cash basis, whatever we paid that vendor for services, uh, then we issue a 1099 for that. Not necessarily inventory parts or materials, just services. Now, the other thing is that on a W-9 form, it does have, it, you know, it tells you what type of entity the vendor is. So if they're an S-Corp or a C-Corp, you don't have to give them a 1099 currently, although we've had heard rumors, I think, for several years that maybe one day we'll be issuing 1099s for those. Um, but a LLP, LLC, sole proprietor, partnership, one of those type of entities, you do have to issue a 1099 for them for any services rendered. Okay, some examples. Somebody building your website, that's considered a service. Uh, somebody writing blogs for you, that's considered a service. Somebody doing your books, doing your um, taxes, considered a service. So there are a lot of different... Um, types of vendors that you can have. And then also there's, of course, subcontractors. Okay, so that's the biggest one, right? <laughs> okay, so to set these up, you're going to go up here. It's under Preferences. So you go up to Edit and then down to Preferences. Okay, it's going to pop up your company preferences. And down here on the bottom, you have your tax 1099s and it's a company preference. Okay. So then it has here all the 1099 categories that you can use and what the standard thresholds are. What that means is if you pay someone, here's the non-employee compensation, so all the subcontractor expenses go here. So if you pay someone $455 only during the year, you don't have to file a 1099 for them. So anything under $600, you don't have to file 1099 for them. Over $600, yes. So that's the threshold and that's based on the federal um, standards. So notice the different categories, rents, if this is, this does mean yes, if you rent office space, you're supposed to provide a 1099 to your, uh, whoever is the, the property manager or whoever owns the property, um, if they are not a corporation, of course. So what you want to do here is you want to choose, okay, which accounts do I pay rent out of? And when I say accounts, I mean account on your chart of accounts. So here, notice it pulls up the expenses up top, but it does pull every account uh, out down here for you to have access to pull 1099, 1099 information from. So rents, um, I'm going to choose rent expense down here. Okay, so the rent expense, anybody I paid more than $600 in rent expense to that's marked eligible as a 1099 is going to pull it uh, to, to tell me that I need to produce a 1099 for them. Okay, we have royalties, other income. Again, if you have questions on these, uh, you definitely want to go look on the IRS website. They kind of explain these in more in depth. But the ones that 99% of my clients use every year is rent, which is you know usually just one or two, and non-employee compensation. That's a big one. Any contractor, subcontractor that you have with your business. So here, of course, you don't just have one account, right, that all that information goes into. You might have multiple. So you're going to select multiple accounts. And we have advertising promotion. We have maybe computer and Internet expenses is one. Um, if you have your IT services going there, but it sounds like that might not be it. Uh, we can scroll down here. Look, professional fees is definitely one. Repairs and maintenance, maybe, if it's uh, you, you know your landscaper or the, the cleaning staff. Okay, so then also, I want to keep scrolling down because I want to get to my cost of goods sold. That's where my subcontractor expense is. I'm going to scroll down here, click on subcontractors, subcontracted services. That's an income account, so I don't want to choose an income account. I just want to choose expense accounts. Okay, and let's keep going, see if there's anything else in here that I notice. Nope, okay, so just those accounts. 
So basically now I have selected those accounts that anytime that we have a bill or a check or credit card payment that goes to those accounts, then that is marked as a, um, a bit of money that needs to go on my 1099. So that's how you set up to get ready for 1099s. Watch our next video on how to actually go in and create the uh, or review and create the 1099s in there.